Um, I'm just going to turn off the viewing screen, the sharing. I can do that. Here we go. And it looks like there's been some discussion in the chat, but no direct questions yet. Um, there's a question from a couple down in Costa Rica. They now have all of their windows are dotted and it totally stopped bird hits. They just used a template and some acrylic paint. So yes, Get easy to DIY evidently. Yes, that would be Tom and Linda that run the SOS trees. Oh, okay. We, you've just been outed. Tom and Linda, there you go. <laughs> they're, they're amazing. So I'm outing them for yeah. being amazing. So yeah. Fans, friends of the family. Got yeah. it. Yeah. Okay, good. Oh, good. And somebody got the UV strips to put on the window and that helps. Good. And a Merlin was after some young robins. Yeah, I bet. And then the Merlin got stuck in the deck. Oh, that's exactly what happens. Yes, it's very hard. Yeah. Okay. Before we, while we give people a chance to ponder their questions, um, while I was in Vermont visiting some friends, this is my birding story. I guess. Um, my friends have chickens and I came to visit them and they, they hadn't been outside. And uh, I was like, I think there's something wrong with your chickens. And what had happened, because uh, they weren't in their pen and the electric fence was down and they were all in the bushes around. So we went and sure enough, there are couple dead chickens and what looked like a golden eagle oh, in yeah. the tree nearby and they were like that's incredible we were just as impressed with the eagle as we <laughs> were with the chickens but oh that was a fun herding experience got to get them all back after being spooked uh, um, so did the eagle get to eat the dead chickens Oh, I came in the middle of his meal, so I can't really <laughs> confirm or deny they were dead. <laughs> but yeah, um, looks like we have one question. Regina has just become a bird friendly city. Yay. Have you been approached for the two cities to work together at all? We have not. No, oh. I think Saskatoon and Regina usually compete. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> so that's why I was sort of throwing it out to Saskatoon to say, well, oh, I would love to work together. Whether we work together or separately, um, the Saskatoon Nature Society is definitely trying to get Saskatoon to move towards becoming bird friendly certified. So if there is some secret that Regina has that we, you made you successful, I'd love it. Because um, I, uh, again, I just, think the more things that we can do, whether it's turning out lights or planting trees or reducing pesticides or building catios to keep cats indoors and keep them safe as well as the birds, anything, yeah. Yeah, Gardenscape is coming, so let's, let's get going. Oh, yeah. Um, someone asked, can we order those new windows from Quebec or is there a local window company that can supply? That you know That's a of. really good question. I would imagine that a window company could get them, um, but you might be able to order them directly from Walker. I, I don't know. Yeah, that's a good question. I have not called the company and asked. Um, we'll have, there's another question about contact info for you, Jan, but we can cover that after we do some, some more of these questions. Is sure. there something to do about keeping the lights off of tall buildings at night and creating the light from escaping. So is I think that's asking sort of what's our advocacy role. Right. So um, Rick Husiak is head of the uh, Saskatchewan Light Pollution Abatement Committee. And, uh, and that's really the, the group that, that we work with um, around our birds uh, initiative. And, uh, and he is rabid about light pollution. Just, I mean, he's an astronomer and he's rabid. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so he's an amazing person in terms of resources for that and trying desperately to get um, a sort of a lights out Saskatoon going. 
basically like, let's just turn the lights out. I mean, I, I don't know about anybody else, but I grew up with my mother harping on me going, turn the light out behind you. When you leave a room, turn the light out. And that's what we need to do. We need to be turning the lights out um, and we need to be building with birds and trees and light pollution in mind. Some of the newer areas have really nice lights that hold the light straight down. Um, when you have mm -hmm. a light that, that sort of lets the light go all over the place, you're not really kind of lighting up the ground, you're lighting up the sky. And so we need yes. to get light pollution, light, you know, sort of ground friendly lights um, and getting things to be ready retrofit but again retrofitting is so much more expensive than just yeah. building it the right way the first time so um so some of the newer areas I want to say um, are, are actually pretty good with the lighting. And again, I think that Rick was probably the impetus for that. Um, but yeah, and in the tall buildings, we just, we need to turn out the lights and we need to stop having these huge floodlights everywhere. Um, they're not helpful. They're not helpful to us on the ground when they're lighting up the sky. What was a real game changer for me was those billboards that are just so ridiculously bright. There's yeah. one in Regina and you can see it clear across town wherever you are. It's so excessive. <laughs> I find them. Yeah, there's one on 8th Street and it's really bright. Yes. I, it's sort of quite blinding at night. Um, what was the name of the person, Rick? Who, Rick uh, Kuziak. Kuziak. Rick Kuziak. And so in terms of reducing, reducing light pollution, um, if you can at home, I mean, things, again, I tend to think about things that individuals or businesses can do is if you, um, is, uh, is put in specific light fixtures that shines the light down to the ground and has, and is flat on top so that the light shines down. Um, those pretty lamp posts that have the, the bulb sort of going up is, is not light pollution friendly. So in terms of explaining more how to reduce light pollution it's about turning off lights um, if you use motion sensors instead of having a light on all the time um, a lot of times people sort of have a light in the ground shining up at the building that's not very light pollution friendly um, and so we want to try and reduce the amount of light that's going up in the sky and so the more that we can kind of face it down a lot of the the street lights that I see, and I don't understand why, but they're kind of at an angle like this. Whereas if they did this, the light would go straight down. It would be so much more effective and it wouldn't be going up in the sky. I don't understand those. And it would be a lot more um, dramatic, like an old film noir movie where yeah, there's just yeah, a pool yeah. of light. <laughs> You can yeah, and, so, and, and a lot of the power <laughs> companies have different ways and different strategies for some of the lighting that they control. So that's good. Um, again, I think that going forward, we have a lot of good information on board now. And so hopefully some of the new stuff is getting built in a way that is far more ecologically friendly. Um, I know that when you look at um, some of the night um, effects. I, I remember Kenton Lysak making a, doing a presentation once and he showed a tree and it was next to a building and they left the light on like all the time. And so the tree had actually grown towards this window that was constantly lit because it was lit at night too. And so the tree was totally, you know, just angled towards that, that window. It was really odd. Um, so it's not just birds. Um, it also affects human sleeping patterns and a whole bunch of other things. But um, so light pollution is its own issue, definitely. Um, and it does impact the birds and the wildlife, but uh, yeah, it's definitely a big one. Well, we're, we're animals that live in the, the biome of yeah. Saskatoon, so we're not yeah. exempt. No, but you can put blinds up on your window to- Yeah, true. <laughs> Yeah. We have a postable the birds that are out there that are kind of trying to nest and there's a big, you know, huge street lamp right over them. They're like, mm, this is not cool. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we, we, we can make it adaptations um, to help ourselves deal with some of the pollution that we cause, but uh, the wildlife out there cannot. So, yeah. I hope I answered all those questions. Yeah, there was some about how to reduce light pollution, pointing out that Sask Power has a dark skies strategy for the lighting they control. And you, yeah, you were saying that there's different power companies interpreting the, the information that they have. 
yeah. for their design going forward. Um, yes. Yeah. And one of the things that I know that some power companies are also doing, which is different than this, is um, raptors have a tendency to land on top of the poles. And, um, and if their wings touch both of the wires, they get electrocuted. Ah. So, on some of those really high risk um, locations, um, they're putting extra poles or they're putting deterrence on there. Um, again, they only put those up if there's a complaint. And so if somebody finds a dead raptor under a pole and never says anything, the pole won't get retrofitted. So please, 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 if you happen to notice it and you live somewhere, um, put in a complaint and notice it and, um, and, and get those poles retrofitted. That's a big issue. Again, yeah. different than birds and windows, but I'm, I, it's all about birds and threats and that sort of thing. So that's just another one. There's a lot. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for your presentation. I'm going to pop in.